Welcome to the GP Lama YouTube channel and in this video a follow-up review on the Four Eyes Precision 3 Power Meter based on the Shimano Road Crank left side only. Now my review of this exactly one year ago today, I identified a number of concerns with this power meter. Look, to be honest, it really wasn't that great. Now, as of March 31st, 2023, Four Eyes released a new firmware for this unit and the updates are as follows. For version 1.2.0, now they're calling this the real-time terrain auto-optimizing firmware update. There's a lot to it, and there's a lot between the lines too. So specifically developed to guarantee optimal performance and unwavering accuracy across any riding surface. What does that mean? Dot point below explains. It uses an accelerometer for exceptional battery life on smooth steady state cruising and automatically switches to the gyroscope on this unit on rougher terrain such as gravel and in high RPM sprints. They've improved the cadence reliability for buttery smooth power measurement and also instantaneous startup and transitional responsiveness for those sprinting from zero to hero up to 220 RPM, although their specs on their website still list 175 or so RPM. However, their zones we're usually not riding in. And also lastly, their industry dominating battery life on a coin cell. Now again, between the lines here, addresses most of the issues that I saw with this unit in my review a year ago. So what's the hot take on my results on this with the latest firmware? Well, they've done pretty well. Now, a few days ago, Road CC did an advertorial slash, well, it's an ad, it wasn't really a review of the meter, and they got a bit of feedback in the comments regarding my initial take on this unit. So I thought it best I present my follow-up uh, testing and results of this unit with the latest firmware. Before diving into the data sets of my testing of firmware version 1.2.0, a quick history lesson on this power meter and the two main claims from the previous version. And that first one being 800 hours of claimed battery life up from 100 hours on the P2 and a very, very low profile power meter pod on this crank. Four eyes are claiming compatibility with I think any frame on the market that will fit a Shimano crank set. Pulling up the full technical specifications, crank-based power meter, Shimano left, single-sided, that's the unit that I've tested. You'll get Amp Plus and Bluetooth Smart Connectivity. CR2032, as mentioned, up to 800 hours of battery life. Power measurement, you'll get left power doubled to give you estimated total power. You'll also get cadence. Power accuracy, plus or minus 1%. Power from zero to 4,000 watts. I can't test that. Cadence claimed here on the website specs of 30 to 170 RPM using an accelerometer with no frame magnet required. Active temperature compensation is yes. IPX7 waterproofing, firmware upgradable via the 4i app. That's very handy as this has a firmware update, which is what I'm talking about today. The weight of the pod is around nine grams and warranty three years. Two options of purchasing this, you can go a ready to ride, where you just purchase the crank with the power pod already on there, or you can send in for a factory install. So send your crank in, they'll install the power meter on it and send it back to you. Pricing for the ride ready, where they just send you the full crank, is around $335 US for a Shimano 105 crank. Check the Four Eyes website for other details. Now onto the section you're probably all waiting for, the data comparisons. But before we get there, just a reminder that comparing power meters is very, very hard, as I'm finding out after many, many years of doing this. Trying to remove all the external variables is very, very difficult, including right down to the recording device. Now I've said this a few times and I'll keep repeating this. If you're recording a power meter or multiple power meters, even with different head units, you'll get different data. So I always try and keep the head unit recording devices the same or from the same company. And you'll see why in just a few moments. And testing single-sided power meters is also troublesome. You can't compare it to a total power meter, such as an indoor trainer, or a spider, or a dual-sided meter, because you have leg imbalance. It influences the total power being reported. Best practice is to test a single-sided meter up against another single-sided meter, and that includes the Asiyama Unos, Powerlink Singles, and the Garmin Rally 100 series. Now, those are directly connected to the same crank, so there shouldn't be any drivetrain loss, and the data should be relatively close. Pushing aside all those technical explanations of what's going on, let's jump here to my favorite website, the DCR Analyzer tool, where we can compare multiple power meter fit files as an overlay and see how they stack up. And ignoring my own advice, the first data set here is the Asioma Duos, recorded with a different device than the uh, Four Eyes P3 on the Garmin Edge. However, it's still worth looking into to see that this uh, power meter is behaving itself. This was back on March 26 with a beta version of this firmware, or a pre-release of 1.2.0. Let's just grab this data set through here. Now remember, we're not comparing apples to apples here. We are comparing a dual sided meter to a single sided meter, but how close can they get when I'm pretty balanced? Not too bad. 233, 232 there for the first 10 minutes of riding. Not bad. I'll grab this data set through here. 
middle of the ride, 201, 199.66. Again, we're comparing a dual sided meter to a single sided meter, exactly what I said not to do, and on two different head units. However, the data isn't too bad. There are some, and this is why I'm pulling this up, there are some differences here with how the Rome reports the data. This is the uh, Wahoo unit, and it smooths things just a little bit more than the Garmin Edge. So it's missing the peaks right here at the start. Um, of that there, and diving a little further, you'll always just see the blue line there a little smoother. However, what that does give us an indication of this unit here operating pretty well, if not excellently, up against a dual sided meter. Well, let's get into the real stuff the Llama lab tests right here. Rally RS100, switching over to the Garmin pedal, single sided, four eyes P3, firmware 1.2.0, uh, both recorded with Garmin Edge units on the latest firmware from the X40 series. Okay, grabbing this little section through here, 212 to 10.3, all looking pretty good. Bit of a drop out here, but where it's located, I can't really tell whether I stop pedaling there or not. However, the Garmin holds on to some power. The P3 drops out a little bit into the sprints. Not too bad for peak power. Curves are relatively the same shape. The Garmin rallies are a little bit more spikier at the start there, grabbing that first pedal stroke or two in the first second on both sides. Nothing too much in it. Now, after the sprints, I did have to zero the rallies. That's just what I have to do. Uh, jumping ahead, though, to the other sprint, and it was flipped over. The Precision 3 grabbed that uh, higher position within a few watts there, though. So not too bad sprint here indoors. Steady state's what we're after. How was it? Good until the rallies dropped out there. Uh, let's call that a what it is, a dropout, how about that? 230, 231, but tracking very, very well between those two meters. I'm not putting the trainer up there because it's total power, not the same thing. Overs and unders, 266, 268.9, not too bad there, no major separations, a lot of stop starts, I guess, for the cadence changes, and that was one area where this was failing with the previous firmware. So that's all looking pretty good. Ramp test and some little spikes here that I'll explain in a second. So rolling along, rolling along. Drop out there from the Precision 3. Again, that is cadence related. All of these dropouts you see from power, you drop down to the cadence section and the cadence is gone as well. I'll show you that in just a few moments. And into the ramp test, not too bad. Um, with the recording devices being one hertz. Um, yeah, that's all looking pretty good. Here, what I was looking for is that cadence response and the subsequent power response from that. Slow cadence means slow power reporting as well. Um, that's uh, revving up just nicely. That was five seconds flat out and five seconds slow. Five seconds flat out, five seconds slow. All looking good. What does that look like on the cadence graph though? Let's pull that up. And yeah, there we have the dropout of the cadence which resulted in drop of the power. But the cadence here is what we're looking at and they are almost one for one in those ramp ups. Previous firmware, especially the very, very early firmware on this unit, cadence was three to four seconds slow, I believe. So they have addressed that issue. That was one of the big concerns that I had with this unit, and that did impact the power reporting from it as well. All right, final data set. Today's ride, trying to keep this one quick. Rally RS100 again out on the road with the Four Eyes P3. Just riding along, just riding along. Reverse Sheep Patrol. 219, 217 with a few stop starts, a few spikes there from the rallies at the end of those. Uh, of note, two dropouts here again. I had, I think, three or four dropouts from the Precision 3, and again, it's cadence related. Uh, so here and here, uh, power-wise, it's hard to compare when there are dropouts and stop starts like that. 228, 228 there, looking good. You can see there's no major separations, no drifting. Things are lining up very, very well. Sprint, uh, looking great for the sprints outside today. Although there's another dropout just here from the P3 as I'm uh, changing through the gears. Now, what this may be, what this may be, and I'll get someone from Four Eyes in the comments maybe to quote below, this could be where it's switching from accelerometer mode to gyro mode, because maybe I'm just jumping through the gears and this is feeling the vibrations and then switching modes. Could be the case, there's a theory. However, in the spritz, let's have a look. Uh, peak power, 1166, 1150. Pretty damn close for the sprints outdoors. Just riding along, just riding along after that. Another dropout. That's for around four seconds as well. Again, I'm wondering if that's the cadence dropout as it's switching those modes. Hmm, could explain what's going on there if I'm on rougher surface, but overall power there, 198, 196, with a few stop starts, all looking good. I'm um, just riding along again, just grabbing a random section, 201, 201, that's looking superb. Drop out there from the rallies, hello. Another sprint again for a single-sided meter, or two single-sided meters, that's looking pretty good. 
Okay, so in conclusion there, what we're seeing is a much, much improved Four Eyes Precision 3 power meter with firmware version 1.2.0. Just as version 1.1.0, I think it was, was a huge leap forward compared to what was initially delivered. 1.2.0 is another massive leap forward addressing most of the issues that I saw in my previous review. Bringing it up to what I would call, well, how it should work. The cadence speed and the pickup of that is now good. Sprints were also very good. There was no lag or missing data there from this power meter. So with firmware version 1.2.0, I have two unknowns with this power meter. Firstly, that 800 hour battery life, has that been reduced in any way, given the accelerometer during operation is a lot more responsive now? To be honest, I think a lot of us would accept 400 hour battery life, maybe even 300 hour battery life. That's a lot of writing time to get out of a single CR2032. Secondly, what's going on with those cadence dropouts? They're not all the time, but they do happen once or twice per ride. And I'd like to get to the bottom of exactly what's going on with them. Is it the switch from the gyro to accelerometer mode or back, given this thing is now auto detecting the surface that I'm riding on? Is it interference with other power meters on the bike? Now, when I split power meters from a dual sided to a single sided, I typically just leave the other side still on the bike with the battery on, so it's still broadcasting or beaconing away. Is that interfering with the data? Speaking of the data, is it the head unit? Is it the recording of the head unit that's causing the problem? Do I need to dual record both power meters? That would be a bloody nightmare on the bike. All rabbit holes that I could go down, but I'll put a stop to right now, and I'll handball this off to Four Eyes for more investigation. Okay, we will leave it there for today. Thanks for watching this one. The update on the Four Eyes Precision 3 with the latest firmware, 1.2.0, which did result in a much, much better performing power meter. I will try and get to the bottom of those cadence dropouts and uh, yeah, keep an eye on the comments below. We'll see what we can find. All right, with that, we'll see you soon.